Most people are angry, like Jeffrey Marsh. Jeffrey Marsh, who is this super, like the creepiest guy you ever saw out of the weirdest horror movie ever, promoter of transgenderism. He, like, cast out of central casting to be the uber villain of transgenderism. Jeffrey Marsh is angry with his critics. It's okay to be angry. Anger is often your body, your mind, your soul's way of telling you that you are worth something, that other people are worth something, that justice counts for something. So no, don't be afraid. Don't be, um, don't be afraid to show your anger. Don't be afraid. <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> Speaking of transgender representation in, in cinema and popular culture, what, what of his point? His point is anger is really good. You should be angry. Use that anger. Channel that anger. Libs say this all the time. Channel that anger. Take that. You don't usually hear conservatives say this. Because anger, 999 times out of 1,000, is going to lead you in the wrong direction. Drew has this line. He says, anger is the devil's cocaine. (laughs) I'm not saying there is no place for righteous anger. There is a far greater place for righteousness broadly. Uh, Yes, there can be a case for righteous anger, but most of the time that you are getting angry, you are falling into a temptation and you're falling into the sin of wrath and it's going to lead you astray and you're going to feel justified in doing it because your enemies might really be as bad as you think they are. And the way that they persecute you might really be as bad as you think it is. But you are called to patience. You are called not to indulge in wrath. That it's, it's like when you punish a child. If you want to punish your child or spank your child or anything like that, what do they always tell you? I'm such a softie with my kids. I got I to get, I gotta get tougher before I totally spoil my kids. But what do the, peop- what do the, the educators always tell you? What, are the, the, what does your grandma always tell you? Well, you don't, don't punish a child when you're angry. Wait until you've calmed down. If, if you're dealing with a rogue employee, like I'm dealing with Mr. Davies all the time, you know, gallivanting around, c- carousing, doing all sorts of nonsense. When I'm going to, you know, bring down the hammer, you don't do it when you're angry you do, you, because you're, you're going to lose your, your rational faculties. You're going to lose control. For how many decades now have we heard, we need to end colonialism in Africa. We need to end neo-colonialism in Africa. We, colonialism was the worst thing that ever happened, and we need to let the African nations govern themselves. Okay, so we've started doing that now. We're letting the African nations govern themselves. Are the liberals happy about that? I don't think so. There's a headline here from The Guardian. Ugandan MPs pass bill imposing death penalty for homosexuality. That's African countries governing themselves. And it's kind of funny that it's the liberals who are the ones who say, this is outrageous. America is so terrible. Stop spreading your evil ideas. Please, Ugandans, live as you like. Very good. We are going to kill all of the homosexuals. Uh, Not like that. (laughs) Um, Did you, what? It's it's like that wonderful video from from the African newscast. You are gay. Why are you gay? The liberals don't, they can't understand that. Because in their view, every single culture is liberal and liberal in a 2023 kind of liberal way. Every, all the cultures are just the same. The only difference is some people have more money and some people have less money. And some people get a little more sunshine. Some people get a little more fog. But you know, we all basically agree on everything. That's not true. So the liberals, paradoxically, are the most inclined to impose their values on the world, but one of those values is not imposing your values on the world. So how does one make sense of that? The way they're going to make sense of that is they're probably going to go in and reimpose their values. Now, as far as I'm concerned, (laughs) the death penalty is a little little harsh. I'm all for standards and sort of maintaining certain behaviors in the public square, but death penalty seems a little strong. But if Uganda is going to have self-determination, this is what they're going to do. And 
there are certain areas where African nations are doing this, where I think a, a lot of American conservatives would say, hey, African nations, can you come run for the legislature over here? The libs are constantly trying to push abortion on Africa. Africa says we don't want abortion. The, the libs are constantly trying to push contraception on Africa. The Africans are saying we don't want contraception. We don't, we don't want that imposition. That's the imposition of your culture, Westerners. You think the imposition of your culture is, I don't know, capitalism and racism and this is, no, every country on earth is extremely racist other than the West. Okay. That's, you're not exporting racism or anything like that. What you're exporting is the LGBT flag and condoms and abortion and all the trappings of liberalism. It's the new kind of colonialism. When the libs protest colonialism, you better bring those protest signs and take a look in the mirror. Speaking of cultural differences, a Michigan college has just announced a number of new graduation ceremonies. This is Grand Valley State University. The Multicultural Affairs Office over at Grand Valley State has now announced there will be graduation ceremonies or celebrations for black students. There's the black graduation. Asian students, Latinx students, talk about colonialism and <laughs> cultural uh, o- overriding of, of norms and tradition, Latinx students, Native American students, LGBTQIA plus students. There's one group of students I can't, there's actually a couple that I can't quite find on this list. Where is the Where's the white student graduation? Uh, the uh, Multicultural Affairs Office has said that won't exist. And there's no, where's the, I don't know, the Christian or let's say just broadly religious student graduation, maybe to counter the more novel uh, sexual revolution graduation. No, none of that's there. And the response of many conservatives is, this is not going to go on forever. At a certain point, white people are going to get extremely angry about this and they're going to push back and say, no, you can't just, you can't make us second class citizens. We're not going to tolerate that. But I'm not, I'm actually not totally convinced. I think the libs probably will get away with it, at least for a very long time. And they'll do that because white people don't have a racial consciousness. And it's one of the delightful things about white people is we just don't think about race that much. We think that race is a relatively unimportant aspect of our identity. We think about religion a lot. We think about culture a lot. We think about nation. We think about affinity to different, I don't know, hobbies and vocations. We don't, race is really, really low on the list. But for every other racial group in the world, it's much higher. According to Pew, white racial consciousness is 15%. For Asians, Hispanics, and blacks, it's over 50% for all of them. And for black people, it's over 70%. So as long as that persists, then you're going to get, you're going to get more of these sorts of graduation ceremonies. Though there is, there is a kind of subtle, there is a a subtly colonial or racist undertone to this whole thing, which is, oh, there's the Latino graduation, there's the gay graduation, there's the black graduation, but the main graduation, that's the white graduation. (laughs) There is, it's, I don't think the libs are totally conscious of it. But it's, it's the, the, the same accident of their uh, invectives against colonialism and racism that you see in their affairs in Africa. Today's Fake Headline Friday. I've got more mailbag questions to get to. We will get to that. You will help me to pick the correct, or the, the fake headline rather, out of the five that Mr. Davies is trying to stump me on. The only way to do it is to become a member of the Crème de la Crème. Not too hoi polloi out here on YouTube. Just like a leech, sucking up all this free content without parting with your hard-earned money so that you can help me figure out which headline is fake on Fridays. No, no. You've got to join that inner circle. La crema. Over at dailywire.com slash Knowles. Use code Knowles for two months free on all annual plans. (laughs) 